What's up guys, Skitter Rampage here. So, what is a Funko Pop Grail? Let's talk about that. As well as guys, if you're new here, please subscribe if you guys enjoy Funko Pop content daily, as well as click that notification bell so you know when my videos come out. As well as make sure to follow me on Instagram and join my Facebook group, which is dedicated to Pops for my subscriber community. And all those links are down below. All right guys, so what makes a Funko Pop Grail? Let's talk about this. So. I've had a few people ask me about this, so I figured I'd finally do a video on it. So I believe there's three things, like top three things that make a Funko Pop Grail. So coming in at number one is personal value. So when I say personal value, I pulled up a couple of my pops off the shelf just to show you. So for personal value, it's like anything that is like personal. You know, if it's like a sentimental thing from your childhood or you're one of your favorite shows and they make a pop out of it and you're like super excited, like that's like personal value. Or, you know, if you went and got an autograph and you really love that person, you were so excited to meet them and, you know, then that's personal value. So one of the personal values for me were, you know, this is, this isn't like an $8 pop. Like this is an $8 Clark Kent small bill pop, but with the signature on it, it's like, it means the world to me. Not that it didn't mean the world to me before, because I loved this show. I loved when they made pops of it. You know, I was scooping them up, trying to buy all of them at once. Um, but still, you know, it says to Dante, we will always have small bill Tom Welling. I have always wanted to meet Tom Welling. He's my favorite Superman next to Brandon Roof. You guys are welcome to argue that in the comments, by the way. But when I say personal value, this is what I mean. Like meeting this guy was like just the world to me. Like he is such a fantastic guy, such a phenomenal dude and very funny as well. And very tall and huge. Like he fits the role of Superman perfectly. So when I met him, I was super excited. Like I was fanboying the whole time. And, I, you know, I was trying not to show it, obviously, but I was just like, yeah, <clears throat> I mean, you're only Tom Welling. I mean, it is what it is. I just, I just, I just want your autograph, and I think you're really cool. But nonetheless, guys, that that's what I mean by personal value. I think, I think it's just something that means so much to you, and then you get so excited about it, and then you know when you grow up watching it, or you know you really love it. Like I've watched Smallville probably all 10 seasons, probably like three times by now, good lord. I watch it way too much, but it's a really good show and it really depicts the story of Superman, I feel like. So as well as I wanted to show another one, uh, well, other two from another set, which are from Arrow. These ones are definitely sentimental value as well, just because when I met John Barman, who signed this, he's like, guy. the guy's just amazing, like all around. He's like one of the best actors I've ever met in person. He's so nice. It's ridiculous and complete opposite of his character. So if you guys are a big fan of Arrow, I highly recommend meeting this guy at any con. I think it's definitely worth the money. Like I, I've never, I've never had money so well spent after meeting this dude. Like he's so freaking nice. It's insane. And you know, it's not what you're expecting because he's a villain in a show. So you kind of expect the opposite in person. And then when you get to him, you just realize, oh wait, he's a normal guy too. He's not just this evil uh, blowing up city type of guy that you see in the show as well as uh, Stephen Emile. So when I first met him, I will say it was disappointing just because of the fact that I wanted to meet him for so long because I loved him so much in Arrow. I loved the first two seasons the most and I watched it for so long that I just fell in love with the character and the guy's awesome. Like, but when I first met him, I will say it was a little disappointing and I was a little, I was really disappointed because I think that weekend he wasn't really feeling up to like public like appearances and he just seemed kind of like he didn't want to be there. Um, it was still really cool to meet him and you know, but it was more like a high and buy situation. So I do hope I get another chance to meet him and maybe he has a little bit more energy. So, and I understand guys, trust me, I understand not everybody is all the time is going to want to deal with thousands of people a day. And that just probably just was not his day. He was still nice about it, but he just didn't seem like he wanted to be there. He looked tired. And I mean, the guy's a superstar pretty much, so it, it comes with it. So it, he was just probably tired. That's what I'm talking up to. So hopefully I get to meet him again and it, it goes a little better. But all around, I was still super happy to meet him and get one of my favorite pop signs. So hopefully for personal value, you guys understand a little bit more of like what makes it personal value or sentimental value for a pop. It doesn't always just have to be about value. And speaking of value, guys, that is number two on the list. So value is a big factor in any collectible fandom. Personal and monetary value kind of clash for the number one spot just because um, everybody's going to have a different opinion on which one's like better and which one's better for that hobby. But in my opinion, I feel like personal value, it, it really overtakes in the pop community over value collectors just because there's so many things that people collect and so many things that people love. But when we're talking about value, something like value is what I mean is like, I have Masto Chaco behind me that you can see. She's a $200 pop. That's value we're talking about. And she got up to that point from being like a con exclusive and things like that, as well as this red eyes freezer here now he's dropped in value significantly from when i first bought him i first bought him at 
$330 and now he's sitting at $200, which I'm bummed about, but still all around, he's a really cool pop and I wanted him for my set. So, you know, eventually I'm sure his value will climb again, but that's the thing with collecting anything. You never know when the value on that thing is going to plummet. You never know when they're going to restock something or, you know, when, um, it's going to be flooded with the market again. And if that's something you can't deal with, or it's going to break your heart, I would say like collecting is not really the thing for you if you're collecting for value or unless you're doing it right. Like you got to do it smart if you're only collecting for value and people know that they really do. So that's what really sucks when you're collecting for value is that you never know when that market for that specific thing is going to crash. And in this case, I lost out on Frieza. I should have waited. But I got impatient and I bought it for $330. And on eBay, eBay was flooded with fakes. So it really dropped the value significantly by $130. I've seen him fluctuate a little bit below $200 and then go right back up. So I'm hoping he gains more value over time like he did. But when the new Broly movie came out, he actually jumped up like $40, $50. So I'm hoping another like Dragon Ball Super movie that comes out will give him a really good boost again and really get him back to that top tier spot. So someone like me, I'm on the cusp of value and personal. Like there's a lot of things I like personal. If we're talking personal, yeah, I love Dragon Ball Z. Dragon, I grew up watching it. All these pops mean something to me in their own little way, as well as value. Each one has their own specific value, and I know that. And I, you know, I collect for value. I collect for personal reasons just because I love them, and you guys know that already. I collect for personal reasons, and I collect for value. Like, it, it's just what comes with any hobby. You just really, you don't even really have to choose something. You can be both. It, it doesn't make you a criminal to be both. Like people criminalize value collectors so much, but like, it doesn't matter. That's what they want to do. That's what they want to do in the hobby. And it's really what drives up the price of your item later on. If you decide to sell it and I get it, you're like one of those people like, Oh, I'll never sell this because I love it. But you never know what's going to happen in life. And maybe you have to sell it. And that value that those collectors, those value collectors drove up really helps you in the long run. So instead of criminalizing them, maybe, you know, praise them a little bit and be like, wow, you brought monetary value as well as my sentimental value that I have for it. So coming in at number three on the list, this one's, I would say maybe not as important, but kind of important for a Funko Pops value. But I wanted to throw it on the list and talk about it a little bit. And that is vaulted pop. So anything vaulted, anything like with a limited run. So we're going to mix like vaulted and limited run anything with a vaulted or limited run most likely has a chance of being a grail but not all the time so a good example is like a 3000 limited piece pop sometimes that's not always going to be just the next three four five hundred dollar grail sometimes there's not enough market or not enough demand for that pop even though there's so little of them out there and i've seen it time and time again of a 3000 piece pop being like 40 bucks like that's nothing in any collecting world i mean 40 bucks is 40 bucks but compared to most of the prices of pops out there that's nothing but when we're talking about vaulted sometimes vaulted can be good and sometimes vaulted can be bad it can be vaulted and really old but it can still only be worth around 30 bucks just because that's just the price that it's at but in some cases vaulted can mean like really really good for a pop so for an example for vaulted i pulled out all might glow in the dark 2017 and tenya so tenya's vaulted all might's vaulted well he's supposedly vaulted he had a re-release because they found 3k stock just randomly funimation found it i don't believe that for a second but it is what it is they found it but it dropped his price significantly even though he was vaulted on one app and vault not vaulted on another and what i mean by that is he was vaulted on the funko app but not vaulted on pop price guide so a lot of people are saying he's not vaulted and then some people are saying he is even though it's like clearly labeled on the funko app that it's vaulted which is really weird. I'm not sure why they would stamp it with a new date if it was just old stock. Why not just sell it with the 2017 sticker or whatever? I don't know. I don't know Funimation's decision, but if you guys know more about that, let me know down below in the comments. So even being vaulted, they still found pieces that really significantly dropped his value. So that's what I mean. Like sometimes vaulted can be good and sometimes vaulted can be bad. In Tenya's case, vaulted was ended up being good because Tenya went from a $10 pop to $125 pop just from being vaulted and there not being that many pieces out there. There are pieces out there, but you gotta have people willing to sell it for it to become more available. And when people see value climb on things, they like to hold on to it because the more you hold on to it, the more people are willing to pay because they really, really want it. Sometimes a vaulted pop can be way more limited than like any thousand piece pop just because you have to be able to find that one vaulted pop in like the condition you're looking for. Because if you're a mint box collector, the chances of you finding a vaulted pop in the condition that you want are really, really slim most of the time just because 
there's so many that were destroyed. There's so many that people didn't take care of. Like again, we'll take Tenya into consideration. He's vaulted. In a couple years from now, he's gonna be extremely more limited because someone's gonna do something to their pop. Someone's gonna mess it up. Someone's gonna mess up the box condition. Mine's in 9.5 out of 10 condition. I would say that people are willing to pay above pop price guide or whatever the value is later on for a more mint box compared to a like slightly damaged box or anything like that just because they really want it in that condition and they're willing to pay you know sometimes 20 30 dollars on top and that's something that really raises the value as well with people being willing to pay more on top of something just because it's so limited and there's so few out so i would say like vaulted and limited edition pieces are kind of the same thing just because vaulted means they stopped making that mold they retired it and they want to move on to something else so there's they're not going to make any more of that so you won't see any more of that and as well as limited pieces like if it's only a thousand pieces that's what you're gonna find and that's what sucks about a thousand piece limited edition pot like there may be a thousand pieces but if there's ten thousand people that want it then that's what makes that value go up to three four hundred five hundred dollars so hopefully this gives you an idea of what makes a funko pop grail um i wanted to just share my opinions on it i want you guys to share your opinions on it below as well i'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on this um like I said, I would say I'm more of a personal and value collector. And I mean, I do like my fair share of vaulted pops because I feel like older pops sometimes look better than newer pops. So let me know you guys' thoughts on this down below as well as subscribe if you have not yet liked the video and thank you to my Patreons. I love you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. See you guys later. Bye.